Michigan Works Southeast, Shamar Heron. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Always a pleasure to be here. Uh, Shamar is just back from Columbus, where he celebrated the 25th anniversary of the uh, Buckeyes in the Final Four. Yeah, man, it was a wonderful experience. And, you know, you don't realize the brotherhood you create in those moments. You just, mm -hmm. you're thinking about getting up, being on time to practice, going to class, uh, hanging out a little bit. But then 25 years later, a couple pounds lighter, <laughs> a hairline less. And uh, you look back and you say, Dan, that was uh, an amazing time. It was an amazing run. And it was like we clicked right back in. Uh, all the jokes being there, all of the fun times, stories for days. And so I'm so appreciative of everything that experience gave me. Did you let all the former teammates know that you aged better than them when you oh, got yeah, there? Oh, yeah, yeah. I told uh, Well, they knew from the beginning. I mean, back in 97, <laughs> who was the most handsome. Right. Uh, we've got one of the guys who had a great career in the NBA, Michael Red, and mm -hmm. I told him, one of us is rich and one of us is handsome. <laughs> I'll let you figure out who's who. Yeah, he got that big contract, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, 150 million. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, but the funniest part about it or the irony of it is the humility everyone still has. Mm -hmm. um, some of those guys are local legends. Me coming from Detroit, Michigan, going into, you know, enemy territory per se, uh, <laughs> I still get accepted there and the love yeah. is just palpable. You can feel it, how much those fans really love their Buckeyes. That's cool. Yeah, I bet you're you almost in Buckeye colors. You're getting, you do have <laughs> scarlet and gray on. I don't know Wait what's till going on. Left. I don't so, know what's happening today. Part's a Buckeye at heart. I got it now. I got it. No wonder we kick it off. Yeah, so what are you well. doing with that tie, hey, too? Man. That's ridiculous. That is so. That's I something Jim Trussell would have worn to a press conference. <laughs> <laughs> he might be back. His name's on the oh, short boy. list. So you hear we'll that, see. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he's over all those health scares. <laughs> I guess so. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got to see you at the Night of Distinction a couple of weeks ago, yeah, the Chamber it was Annual. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys sponsored the Reach Hire Award. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there you are with uh, Heidi Washington, MDOC director. And it's pretty cool that she came down to accept us. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I got the same blazer on. I was trying to avoid that, but uh, <laughs> uh, maybe next time. That happens to us once in a yeah. while. <laughs> I told my wife while I was getting dressed, I don't remember what I wore last time. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, the work that the MDOC does is, uh, you know, really needed in society. But over there in that special space over on Cooper, it's unbelievable uh, the work that they're doing to help people prepare once they get outside of right. the facility. It is just amazing. We've got a quick uh, video uh, from the awards. Let's take a look. My name is Noah Nagy. I'm currently the warden at the Parnell Correctional Facility, which is home to the Vocational Village. Uh, we work uh, for the Michigan Department of Corrections. Vocational Village uh, was started in 2017 here at the Parnell Correctional Facility and home to uh, skilled trades uh, and something that uh, was developed in a sense of preparing individuals to go home uh, with a trade uh, to transition from prison to the community. Trade-wise, we have the last mile, we have CDL, we have uh, CNC, uh, uh, building trades, uh, masonry, and uh, automotive mechanic. We're in the midst of expanding our vocational uh, village here at Parnell Correctional Facility by adding a heavy duty diesel mechanic program uh, scheduled to open between March and April of this year. We're very excited about that opportunity. Vocational Village works uh, closely with folks in the community that are, are currently in these uh, trades and really trying to transition an individual from the time they leave by having a job upon, upon release. And when we're talking about a recidivism rate, a uh, recidivism rate for the state, uh, the Department of Corrections is at uh, 22% which is our lowest uh, ever. But then you also look at those folks that participate in the vocational village trades, that recidivism rate is even at a lower rate. Uh, so something, again, that we're very proud of. And you look at our motto for the Department of Corrections, committed to protect, dedicated to success, we're trying to set individuals up to return to the communities. Well, we actually have uh, an open house at the Jackson Area Career Center tomorrow mm -hmm. and big focus of our community and Michigan Works Southeast is uh, getting kids ready for careers. Yep, yep. So, you know, you'll always hear me espouse greatly about 
uh, how we need to be preparing our young people, mm -hmm. right? It's just a fact. Some of us are going to retire earlier than others, but we need to be preparing that future workforce. And so where we're at is career and technical education. So the pendulum swung really far around. Everyone needs to go to college, right? And so that pendulum, pendulum is swinging back more now around, hey, what are some certifiable skills that you can obtain without having to amass crazy mm -hmm. amounts of debt? And it's called career and technical education. And so the work that's being done here uh, over in Jackson is amazing. You guys have partnerships and programs uh, available. Talk a little bit about the, and it is CTE Awareness Month. Too. It is CTE Awareness. You guys are always on it, man. Always. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it is CTE Awareness Month. Uh, and so our partnerships are broad, right? Mm -hmm. We want to support our young people and those who are not so young in their career exploration and understanding what are some of the certifiable skill sets that they can obtain that where they can make money now. Mm -hmm. We often understand that not everyone can go and spend six, eight, 12, 24 months getting training without receiving some sort of income in. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of what we participate in is setting up a person to be able to have a sustainable income coming in while also getting the training they need to further their career. It's so important. It's, uh, you know, if you picture trying getting ready for something, but dealing with the stress of not having an income, I mean, it's hard to, hard it, to even it, It's fathom. impossible, right. Though, right? Like how many of us are willing to step away from uh, a, a profession or a career or just a plain old job to right. go and get training and hope that we get placed <laughs> somewhere. No, I need money now because our grocers don't accept IOUs. Right. Yeah. You've got a, a pretty cool program, My Internship Prep, and that is getting kids uh, connected to, to industries where there are internships. Absolutely. So what we're going to do, and I'll speak specifically here in uh, Jackson is, we're gonna start working with our municipalities a lot closer. A few years ago, we had a great partnership with Jackson County and the city of Jackson, where we placed young people in those municipalities. We're going back to that model. We wanna make sure our young people understand the inner workings of government work. Uh, I'm a governmental employee per se, uh, and I'm doing okay, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not missing any meals, my lights aren't getting cut off, and we need our young people to understand there's a great career path. Uh, and my internship just prepares our young people to be able to go in and understand how you uh, show up, so your attendance, how you dress, so your attire, your attitude. We call it the bringing your A game. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of attributes you need to have in soft skills in order to be successful, and we're starting at the foundational level. That's great. Yeah, Michigan Works Southeast uh, providing a lot of services to uh, businesses, to individuals uh, seeking jobs. There's all kind of training. There's you have seminars. Everyone can just. Yeah. Uh, check it out by visiting your website. If businesses want help. Uh, don't get me more fired <laughs> up, man. You guys are good again. But seriously, uh, our business services team, which I want to start talking about more so that our business community understands, we have a three-legged stool at MWSE. And you, you talked about the website. It's mwse.org. Uh, but we have a three-legged stool. So we help our adult learners. We help our career seekers, people who are actually out looking for employment. But a lot of folks don't know about those employers that we worked with. We worked with thousands of employers last year to help them understand the tools that we have to offset their training costs. Imagine being able to receive up to 50% of someone's uh, compensation for up to six months to offset the cost of them getting the training as they're employed. We have those tools readily available, and we're looking to help our business community even more than we did last year. Awesome. Appreciate you guys uh, for all you do, and thanks for coming in today. All my pleasure. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. All right. Shamar Heron, Executive Director of Michigan Works Southeast. More of the morning show after these words.